Welcome back to the GG Over Easy podcast. I am your host, and so is Rob. And we have the boy Arios here. It's him. Good to be back. The man, the myth, the legend uh, on today's GG Over Easy. We're going to talk about a little bit about Arios, uh, what he's been up to, uh, a little bit about his Twitch stream, the games he's been playing. Uh, we talk a lot about Cyberpunk, uh, how we feel about uh, the new fans of Liberty, but more important, how Arios feels about it because he's been going in. Uh, we opened some Pokemon cards with Rob here uh, near the tail end of the uh, podcast. Uh, a lot of sports, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of talk about working out this stream or this stream, this podcast. We talk a lot about uh, fitness and stuff, and a um, bunch of other things. You know how it goes. And let's see what Rob pulls from this Pokemon card pack. We got Grab, and then we'll get into the episode. Arcanine, Ooh. Rhyhorn, oh, we got another Rhyhorn. Come on, baby, give us something good. Ooh. Giovanni's, Giovanni's charisma. charisma. Oh. Whoa! Oh, and then man. Arbok EX. Rob's pulling some pretty good packs. I'm not gonna lie. That's clean, man. That's clean. Not bad. But yeah, all that and more in this week's GG Over Easy podcast. Stick around. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or something even crazier than that. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning, flavored air device, and that's just that. Instead of vapor, Fume is flavored air. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of hormonal chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. If you think about it this way, for me, Fume is like a herbal tea while my other sorts of pens are bad sodas. I'm just making the right decision every time I'm using my Fume. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard. But switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has had thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code GG to save 10% off when you could get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code GG to save an additional 10% off your order today. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the GG Over Easy podcast, episode two hundred and one. Mm. Um, um, as you saw in the intro, we are joined by our boy Arios this episode. Welcome, Arios. Good to have you back. Don't know how. I actually don't know how long it's been since you've been here. I don't know, probably like maybe seven, eight months. I think this is my fourth time on. Yeah, good to have you back. I think so. Good, good to be to back. Dude, Thanks for having uh, me. Guys. Let's pump Appreciate those it. numbers up. Let's aim for like ten by the end of the year. Let's get 30. Why not? So a question I have for you, Arios, is I've blue and I, I will say are probably some of your biggest lurkers in your stream. Admirers. Uh, not, hey, yeah, thank yeah, you. Dare uh, I say stalkers. Yeah. I'm I'm if you're playing uh my favorite stream that you play, um, which I think is one of the coolest games that I've still yet to play and kind of want to do is your super mega ultra baseball. Oh yeah. Super mega um, baseball four, baby. And I think since we had you on, they they launched a new game. Um, and yep. has that kind of been primarily what you've been streaming lately or? Super Mega Baseball 4? Yeah, definitely. It came out in June, July, uh, August. I think it came out in July. And uh, I have 429.1 hours in it. Sheesh. It's a, a lot of home that's runs. Like, and most, most of that stream hours, like. Yeah, yeah, most of it is stream hours for sure. Uh, but I mean, it's really just pretty laid back. It's chill. Don't take itself too seriously, which is you know, which is um, why it's so fun to me. For those that don't know, and you know, I, I think a lot of sports games, sports video games, are absolutely trash and are terrible. Yes, and are basically just trying to get your money. Yeah. Besides what the game I see you play, the game I see you play genuinely looks like you know that that era of sports games in like 2006 like 2010 where it yep. was literally just like fun and right. it wasn't like trying to get your money and maybe i'm wrong maybe super mega baseball does have that side of the game and you just don't touch it um but from what i can tell that's the kind of sports game that like gives me hope for sports games and 
like in the hundred percent, hundred percent. You don't like you're not like a big fan of like EAFC, Rob. Like fuck no, dude. <laughs> Those games are absolutely mm. trash. Like, like, like Madden, like FIFA, two uh, K. You know, it's all the same bullshit every year. They regurgitate everything, but put like a different word on it. Like instead of like the physics engine, it's now the hyper engine. You know, it's all just like the same thing regurgitated because they know that the money isn't made by the franchise mode or 100%. whatever. It's all in the ultimate team. So all ultimate those team, resources yeah. and all their like time and effort is put onto those bullshit cards that just teach kids how to gamble at an early age. Um, that it, it is literally some of the worst, uh, in my opinion. And I think this is like, I think I've said this before on stream, like ultimate team is some of the worst things that ever happened to gaming just in general. Like, I think a lot of the things you see with microtransaction, my, microtransactions literally started from like the ultimate team kind of FIFA thing. 100%. I completely agree with that. I mean, like you said, like these companies are seeing where the money is being made and obviously franchise mode, which is what I love. Uh, that makes them the initial, you know, $60, whatever it is yeah. to actually buy the game. And then that's it. But these my team modes, you know, the ultimate teams, the modes with the cards trying to buy, you know, the next top tier player or whatever, it just makes them more and more and more and more. So all the resources are being poured into these modes but the game as a whole is just it, it, it is it is not as quality. It, it, it's it's just not the same type of sports games we had back in the day that had personality, that had charisma, that really gave you that fun factor. They're stripping more and more features. They're stripping more and more modes. And it's all going into these card pack modes. Uh, and but but, you know, we're we're getting a worse product as a whole. And it's and yeah. we've seen it with Madden. We've seen it with 2K. We've seen it with FIFA. And, uh, and it's a big issue in sports gaming, which is why sports gaming has fallen off in terms of the quality of the games over the years. But that's where I was saying with super mega baseball, it almost seems like it's right. coming, trying to bring those things back. Am I right about that? It, exactly. Like there's no card based modes. There's no ultimate team. It's literally just jump in and just play, you know, it kind of gives you, or kind of gives me the vibes of like the old, like, you know, backyard baseball games, which were just so much fun oh. to play, had so much personality. And that's kind of what super mega baseball has to me. It just has that personality. It has those fake generated players along with some old, like MLB legends. And that's a that, newer thing, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Yep. They didn't have like the legends in the past, but, but they teamed up with like the players association They added some old MLB legends. So it's cool seeing some of those older players in there, like the Hank Aaron's and whatnot. David um, Ortiz, I think is like in there. David too. Ortiz cover boy, but then you get these sort of, uh, these sort of auto generated, like fake players that aren't real, but have their own stories and personalities to them. to where you kind of become like emotionally attached to them. So um, so I mean, let, let, let me ask you, who's fun. like your club legend? Like, who's your club legend that's been with the the realm since the beginning? Man. Um, and like, they're a first ballot Hall of Famer, Ring of Honor, like type of Tom Brady, if you will. So this actually goes back to Super Mega Baseball 3. I played 13 seasons of a franchise. We had this picture. How many hours is that? Oh, man. Uh, probably 900, maybe 1,000. Okay. But we had this picture. It was a reliever. His name was Ramen Noodle. And when you I make started, the names, are they random names like that? Uh, as well? So they have random names, but you can also go in and edit the names to whatever you want. Okay. So I named him ramen noodle. Um, and okay. we had him when he was like 23 years old in season one. And he stuck around all the way to the very last season, season 13. And he was the only player on the team that was still an OG from the very first season that was still there in season 13. And we wanted to send him out a champion. We wanted to send him out on top. And that's exactly what we did. Ramen Noodle, seven time champion, greatest to ever do it. Wow. Seven yeah. timer. Seven so that's time what I was champion. about to ask you. Do you play on the hard difficulty or is it basically like, because when I do a franchise mode, you can basically like make yourself win the championship every year. Or right, do right. you, or do you have like sliders that make it way more difficult? Well, that's the thing about Super Mega Baseball. They have a very like unique difficulty thing called the Ego Mode. Um, so basically, it's a rating from one to ninety nine, 
And unlike, you know, Madden, whatever, they have the rookie, the pro, the all pro, like the all star, whatever. Elite, this yeah. one to 99 rating can really allow you to sort of fine tune and tweak your difficulty. Um, so instead of just five difficulty modes, like most sports games, there's 99 yeah. and, and you just tweak it and you can even set it individually for pitching, hitting, base running okay. um, and fielding. So if you're a little bit better at hitting, maybe you bump that up, but not as much as pitching. Maybe you keep that down so you can really fine tune it. So I like to, you know, for me, these championship wins mean more when we're out there battling. We're out there grinding. We're out there sweating, giving everything we have, leaving it all out on the field trying to win these championships. We don't want it easy. That's not the way we want it. We want to battle. Yeah. We want to grind. We want to come out on top. So would you say that when you first started streaming this, would you say your audience wasn't familiar with baseball at all? And then like, as soon as it kind of came around to season two and three, they were like, man, this is the fucking best thing ever. When, when I first started playing it, it, it was something where, I mean, I, I didn't really have um, a viewership that really watched sports or was that interested. Um, and I'm not even a big baseball guy myself, but yeah. I picked this game up on Steam and I started playing it and it was just genuinely fun. And, you know, to have a game where you just genuinely enjoy playing, like you boot it up and you're just having a blast, like you're not forcing yourself to play um you're just you're just enjoying it and especially you're streaming gaming. too like to have a game that you're streaming that you actually love too it, it it not only makes for a better stream but it makes you know just for a better um uh like a better um uh, experience for the viewers too because if you're having yeah. fun and enjoying yourself then they're gonna feed off that but if you're just kind of going going through the motions and just the vibes aren't there um and everybody can kind of feel that but yeah. I, I would just generally having so much fun playing and, you know, just creating storylines for the players, just, you know, making up these, you know, off the field drama issues and just having these players, you know, throughout the seasons that we come to know and kind of get emotionally attached to. Like it just created this environment that was just fun for everybody involved and just, you know, cheering on the team, rooting for an individual, you know, player. Um, it was just genuinely fun to play. And, you know, it's not only like I, I haven't always had a game like that to where I'm just I'm just really enjoying myself. Like there's really not that many for me. So to have this, you know, super mega baseball like franchise that just kind of brought the magic back to sports gaming, something that I love growing up was just yeah. unique. And, and I was just happy to, you know, to have something like that. Because I think a lot of people don't know about this. Like in your early lore, you were like a sports YouTuber specifically. Yeah, like for sure. Like, for sure. Um, yeah. So um, I've actually recommended your streams to like my friends that like play, like they do like an MLB, the show franchise thing. And they always like bitch about them taking out like a lot of the things that the show had in the last yeah. game. And then they uh, take it away. And then I told them about super ultra mega baseball on your stream and they were watching yeah. it. And I think that they want to start like their own kind of super ultra mega baseball type of thing, but they're not, is it only on PC? Or? No, no, no. It's on, uh, it's on console, uh, and it's on PC as well. And it's, and it's cross play for online as well. Um, yeah, it, it, it's one of my favorite streams, like just to lurk in and watch. Cause I, I can, that. like, like you said, dude, like you're having fun, mm -hmm. you're engaged, like the game yeah. is engaging and you know, it's not kind of one of those sports games where you just walk through and I know you're going to go 92 and oh, and like. I think yeah. I saw you guys lose a, uh, a hard fought playoff series and the yep. chat was gutted. Um, yeah, we're devastated. You know, we put it all out there and we came up a little short, but, you know, we'll just run it back. But, um, you know, to your point, Rob, though, yeah, like my my um, my origins do come as a as a sports YouTuber uh, back in 2014, 2015 through about 2016, 17. You know, I, I played a lot of Madden 2K, MLB The Show, and that's the content that I made. But it was around that time, like we were talking about earlier, a lot of those My Team modes started to really gain popularity and the yep. quality of those sports games really started to decline. And that's when my enthusiasm for sports gaming started to, to uh, you know, kind of go down as well, because I realized like the franchise modes were being stripped and more and more features and more of those features uh, and, you know, resources were going into the ultimate teams and the My Teams. Yeah. and. I decided, well, I'm not having fun anymore, so I'm just going to go play other stuff. Yeah, um, it's just like one of those things. I think sports games um, these days, like they all have like their own little thing. Like I do play FIFA 24, FC 24, but I don't play the ultimate team. I just play the clubs thing where it's mm, like you play with yeah. your friends and you have right, your right, little right. dude running around on the field. And like that's where yeah. like the fun is um, working together but, with your friends and whatnot. 
sure. Yeah. Well, them just yelling at me that I suck, but um, <laughs> mostly that. Um, but there's also another game that you've been streaming lately that I have tons of questions about because I'm really curious about it because I want to try it out. Um, and it's been getting a lot of good reviews and people saying it's back. Uh, yes. Cyberpunk. Yes. Uh, how have you felt about Cyberpunk? What are like your whole feelings about it. Is it officially back? Did you play when it originally came out as well? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I played in what was it? 2019 or 2020 when it, when it came out initially, um, I think it was and, 2020, 2020. Yeah. And, and I know for, for last gen consoles, for the PS4, for the Xbox one, it was, it was pretty brutal. Like it honestly had no business releasing on those consoles. It just, it, it was not a good product. I thought on PC. I think they like forced refunds, right? Like one of the first times I think like Sony yeah. took it off a store and stuff too. Like yeah, it was it, crazy. It was, it was brutal. I mean, it, it had no business being on there. I, you know, like for me, um, I played on PC. I thought it was fine, but it felt sort of uninspired. It felt like it was missing something. Like you had this incredible city in Night City, you know, with so much going on, uh, with so much backstory to it, but yet it, it just felt like it lacked some life. Um, it just lacks something. And so while I played the game and I enjoyed it back then, I, it was, it was sort of like I left a meal still feeling hungry, but yeah. you fast forward now three years later, right? There's been significant updates. It was recently a 2.0 update, which added a whole bunch of new features that we were asking for when the game first came out. And then they came out with the Phantom Liberty expansion, which adds Idris Elba as a major character, uh, which which has a whole great, great story that I'm still working through currently. So is Keanu still in this? Yes, list? Keanu okay. is in the expansion as well as he is throughout the main game, which he does okay. a great job there as well. Uh, but I can honestly say, at least in my opinion, that Cyberpunk has had one of the biggest like redemption stories in gaming. Like a lot of people talk about No Man's Sky is a big one. Absolutely. I would throw cyberpunk in there as well. Like the game we got back then compared to the game now, it, if like to me going back and playing again, it, it it's just, it feels different. Like it feels lively. It looks yeah. fantastic. It plays smooth. Uh, the story is great. Night city now feels like it has that life to it, which is and great. Is, is this a DLC or just the base game now? Like uh, so the phantom Liberty is an expansion. So it has a whole okay. new area to the map uh, along with new missions, uh, with some new um, sort of like skill tree stuff. Uh, so it adds some new mechanics as well. Kind of like if you guys played The Witcher 3, like like um, The Witcher 3 DLC Blood and Wine added in some like new mechanics to the game that mm -hmm. you could go and play like the whole game with. Kind of the same thing in Phantom Liberty. Like it added some brand new skill, skill tree stuff, new like new weapons, new animations, oh, yeah. stuff like that. So it's just like so much more was added to this game. So what it was back then compared to what it is now, I mean, it is like night and day uh, in Night City. Night it's City. it's Damn awesome. Damn it, I was going to get there. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> I beat you to it. But yeah, dude, it's it's honestly great. And, you know, it had the it, it was it was it was pretty brutal back then. I know it had a lot of bad press to it. Um and start out on the right foot but you know i'm glad they stuck with it rather than just sort of abandoning it and just taking the money and running i'm glad they stuck with it and were committed to making a quality game granted it took three years right it's unfortunate that it took three years for them to, a long to time. Finally put it all together that shouldn't be the norm right i don't want to give them credit for that but i will say though credit to them for sticking with it and delivering on what they promised initially. And I think it's pretty quality now. I'm they, really enjoying it. They, they took an insanely like what can only be described as perfect path because not only did they release a banger DLC, they also in the year leading up, well, I guess the year and a half, two years, they had the, that anime that just really yes. popped off edge runners and they just kind of kept uh they've done like a really good job over the cut past couple of years of keeping the attention on cyberpunk even when it was in its downtime like even when it had the negative press they were still like yeah we're updating it also here's this banger anime also we're still updating cyberpunk also here's the 2.0 update dlc and we're updating a ton of stuff so they just they've had yep. their they've they've they they, they they the only way i can describe it like they they've kind of like kept their finger on the trigger ever since the launch even if it wasn't always like it wasn't always great sure but they really never there there hasn't been like a single moment where they're just like this year let's just not let's just let people forget about cyberpunk 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I, um, and I, and I just saw a few days ago that they're going to make now a, a, a live action cyberpunk movie. They're still well. going. They're not done. Yeah, they're, they're not still done going. yet, baby. So you guys uh, talked about the, an- did you watch the anime areas? Uh, so I, I have two episodes left. I was recommended it and it delivers as well. Um, I heard a lot of great things about it and everybody was right. Absolutely fantastic. But like, I love how it, it, it sort of ties into the game too. And then you go play the game and they have stuff from the anime in the game now integrated. So it's like, it doesn't feel like two separate things. It feels like That's one, cool. like one world and it's all in this same world of night city it's so just, you could like see something awesome. in the anime and be like oh i like that like yes because like it's like you attach things to your human body right like that's yeah. kind of the whole thing of a cyber so it's like oh that guy has like katana blade arms i want that oh, dude and that, yeah. that dude's got a yeah. robo like, dick that. i want that exactly or or like the apartment that you start out in in the game is the apartment that the main character lives in in the in the um, anime at the start oh. so it's cool how it's all it's it's really just in the same city and it's all sort of tied in together it's it's really awesome highly recommend yeah i'm about to start playing the spider-man games um because i know the new spider-man's coming out and the trailer for that looked really cool and i haven't played yeah. like a, a spider-man since like the ps2 days uh so I'm, i oh. really want to try out the cyberpunk it, too because i like, captured a lot of people in the same way the ps2 games capture people so yeah that's what kind of it seems like everyone is Their saying something's like they're saying it's like some of the best like gaming they, they've ever had and like i feel that way about the ps2 games like i loved the ps2 games like i just don't know why i haven't gone back and played it um but i definitely am excited um about the new spider-man that trailer looked really awesome and yeah, those never disappoint for sure True. thank you um have you have you did you play cyberpunk at all blue or did you kind of see as it kind of went through its whole thing that so maybe i'll just wait so i was i i started a little bit and i was already pretty enthralled by the setting and everything my issue well i didn't start till like way later like after it came out because i was one of those people who were like who saw the shit storm i was like i'm gonna wait a little bit like let's let's give it a couple months Oh God, let's give it a couple months and, um, see where it goes. And a couple months later I tried it and my PC was like making the ugliest noise I've ever heard come from my PC. Mm. And I had heard so many stories of how cyberpunk just absolutely railed the shit out of people's PC. And I was like, let's wait another year. Oh, was it like graphics cards then too and stuff? Uh, at this point, probably there's like what, what like big, game that is trying to over deliver something that has never been delivered before oh this is so cute what uh, yeah that doesn't have like a gpu melter right so it's right i don't know i i like my pc i would i would like to not send my pc or my gpu to an early grave so i'm pretty hesitant when it comes to these games until they get optimized so yeah it made a really ugly sound and i just never played i yeah, probably didn't play is- it now because I mean, everyone's really going off about it. So I, I, it. I do want to give it a try. It does run well, too. I haven't had any issues. I mean, if you crank on like the ray tracing and all those, you know, bells and whistles, it, you, you know, the computer stuff, you're like, yeah. oh, yeah. but it plays well. It's smooth. It's it's fun. Did, um, did you try Starfield at all, Arios? Would you say like this is like oh. the best uh, like RP? It's RPG, right? Like, it's, I mean. Yeah, so I did try Starfield. I did. I was having mm-hmm. a decent time with it. Phantom Liberty came out, and I couldn't go back. I okay. I really I couldn't go back. Um, nothing against Starfield, but Cyberpunk was just so immersive. It was so engaging. Mm-hmm. Um, I couldn't I couldn't leave it uh, to go back. And you know, I mean, obviously, Starfield is a quality game in itself, but Cyberpunk, you know, there are no load screen issues like everything just flows like everything flows and, and and i like that i like that immersion of not having to go through multiple loading screens and and and, and that just i just like the way it all flowed together and i was just so immersed in this city it was it was yeah. great for me so i really want to try it out because like i haven't had that like rpg itch since like maybe fallout 4 and even fallout 4 when it first came out really wasn't all that what I was like looking for to sink my teeth into. I did try like Skyrim mods and stuff. Um, and oh, that yeah, was I fun. Playing that. Yeah, it was a little confusing and it got a little bit too, 
it got to be like too much when you add like 90 different mods onto mm-hmm. a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm glad you like it. Is it your primarily what you've been streaming lately? That, uh, yeah, ever since Phantom Liberty came out and the 2.0 update for Cyberpunk, I mean, plus there there's just so much to do. Like when it comes to CDPR, like when they do side missions, it's not just, oh, like go there, grab this, come back. Like it's a whole ass like main story quality side mission where there's tough decisions and, and all kinds of crazy stuff. So, yeah, just, you know, uh, with all the so new you still stuff, have a lot to go. Oh, dude, I got a whole I mean, I haven't even touched really too much of the main story because I've been mostly doing like expansion stuff. So, I mean, Uh there's just so much to play, so much content uh, to be enjoyed that, you know, it's going to take me a while to get through it for sure. Nice. Well, I'm glad you found it. So that gives you your little RPG itch. And then uh, the baseball gives you your nice little sports itch so yeah, you actually like you, you'd say yeah. you're in a good spot with gaming right now then for sure like i i always know when i'm enjoying a game when like when i'm you know like away from the house and i'm like man i can't wait to get home and play like cyberpunk or play super mega like that's how i know i'm really enjoying something where i just can't wait to get home crack it open and just you know enjoy some hours just playing so i'm, gonna I'm see, in a good I'm spot for sure. how many people are playing the cyberpunk game right now on steam dude it's, this is obviously it's just steam it's had a resurrection for sure. I think it's even wow. past Starfield right now. Bro, uh, 134,000 people playing Cyberpunk right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really impressive. I mean, can and you guys like, think of like some redemption stories in gaming, sort of like the No Man's Sky or like the Cyberpunk? Yeah, I mean, like No Man's Sky. I mean, No Man's Sky comes to my mind, but then like redemption story, I think is like two years at the most. Like No Man's Sky came out, man. 2015 i want to say like i feel like yeah. that shit came and out dare I say, ago. and dare i say no man's sky had a bigger redemption because oh, yeah, with cyberpunk, sure, cyberpunk sure. there was still like a lot of there was there was like um it was a, it was a lot of poop a lot 2016 of poop. but there August was there was diamonds in that poop like you could see yeah. it Yep, with No yep. Man's Sky, it was just like, y'all, but, it's getting really hard to find these diamonds in the sewage. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, that, that, a that lot game. Of shit. But I feel like that game took too long to be resurrected. You know what I mean? Like, I think for seven years to your game would be like, all right, it's finally like what we said it would be. In it definitely lost me, too, because I went back and I was like, I had a good time with it, but I think it just didn't grab me in the same way that like the launch hype grabbed me i mean it, like it was great don't get me wrong like when i finally played it, i was like this is dope this is how it should launch but at that point i'm kind of yeah. like i kind of i'm, I'm kind of already i kind of already want like a bigger better game uh that isn't so you know the, no man's sky. i'm looking at here no man's sky um their all-time peak was two hundred and twelve thousand. i'm trying to find when that was it was definitely past it was it was definitely one of the big updates post uh post research. Oh no, it's no, it's literally the day that it came out, August twenty sixteen. It really? had a average Dang. players was thirty six thousand and its wow. all time peak was two hundred and twelve. So and now like this week, fourteen thousand average, thirty four thousand peak. So it's still it's, kicking. It's still kicking. Yeah, but like not in the point of cyberpunk, because I think for me, like a redemption, it needs to be within like the two years of your release date. Mm. I think for seven years, you're going to lose so much of the player base. And maybe the anime kind of helps too with Cyberpunk. Cause like, yeah, there's some times sure. in Cyberpunk, like, like Ooh. you go here June 2021, which is its like lowest point is 8,000 players. And then right around when the anime came out, it jumps to 43,000 and 53,000. When you left, I, we were saying that even though the game launched and had just, it was a PR nightmare. CD Projekt Red never let the gas off the pedal. They kept like, they're like, we got to keep Cyberpunk in people's brains. Here's a banger anime. Here's a Cyberpunk updates. Like there wasn't yeah. like a year where there wasn't some type of Cyberpunk news cycle. So they kept their their marketing team over there and their general general approach of like, hey, this game's not gonna die. Let's make sure. It's not dead in people's minds. Uh, worked really well. And that's probably why it didn't seem like such a long time compared to No Man's Sky. Because, I mean, it, Cyberpunk did come out a couple years ago. But it doesn't feel like it because it's still fresh in people's minds because they've made sure it stayed like that. Whereas No Man's Sky, like, they dropped a 
they dropped a big old stink bomb and then just went radio silent till they dropped like a massive update. So, yeah, I'm trying to think of like a game that I like have seen redeem itself. I um, I wanted to see Anthem that uh, oh. that didn't turn out so well. Uh, Edge. I mean, Final Fantasy, Fantasy, you could say rebounded. 14, that's right. 14 was a dog shit, and people fucking hated it. And then they rebuilt the whole game, and now it's the biggest MMO on the market currently. I I mean, that one was that was a pretty big rebound. I'd say it took it was like a slowish burn because people knew how good it was for years, but it wasn't until like like Shadowbringers which was at that point, what, like six, seven years into the game's life cycle? Because Shadowbringers was 20... Shadowbringers was, what, 2019? And then Endwalker was 20. I, I, get, I, I haven't played the game for so long, I can't even remember the, the timeline. But it, it was quite a few years after it, its uh its initial release that it finally like hit like the mainstream. Like, this game bangs super hard, so... What else besides 14? 14 was was definitely one of the biggest rebounds. Well, I'll be right. Dude, I gotta admit. All right, so I, I so this is the culprit right here, right? This is why I'm is struggling. Okay? Are you? Oh, no, this, no, is a, oh, that's, no. this is a. I naked. hate to. I hate to hate on my boy right now. This is a naked mighty mango, right? I had this this morning while I was editing. Videos. How old is it? It's not old, dude. Like I just got these from Costco. Like I what's, mean, like where the... do I see expiration on this fucking thing? Um, did it need to be like refrigerated? They yeah, do. of course. It was like it's refrigerated. Like it's. Uh, I went through the proper steps, but like, dude, I got like bubble gut. Like you know, like you know, like when you eat something bad, and you feel like there's like a brick in your stomach, and then you go and sit on the toilet, and nothing is like working, and then you're like, well, maybe I'll like puke, and then like, okay, so you gag, you just dry heat for twenty minutes instead. So now I'm just on this back and forth thing with the stomach, with my stomach. You man. got something. So, you did not get the mighty mango. You got something else in that. Oh, bro. When's I got the some mighty ate, shit. When's the last time you ate fruit, big guy? Uh-huh. Yeah, well. Like fruit? Is that uh, your first fruit serving in a couple months? Probably. Bro. Jesus like, Christ, if I'm man. Actually, like, <laughs> if I'm like actually taking a step back and like thinking about it. That might, that might, your stomach is Maybe like, like two months ago, Sydney cut up some fruit that we got from Costco. Your stomach that, is that, like, and, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably actually that. So maybe it's not the Mighty Mango. Maybe it's my digestive issues and that I do not nearly eat enough veggies if you, or. If you haven't had fruit in a couple months and that smoothie, that hodgepodge of a lot of different fruits, that probably, that's probably not going to sit yeah. great in your stomach. It's three fourths mango, one fourth banana, one apple, half an orange, and a hint of lemon. Mm. See the mango. Maybe it's that hint. That hint of. Ooh. Yeah, that's true. Could be yeah, the so hint of lemon. I am. I am currently on the uh, the struggle bus right now, which is why I'm going to run up and Just... uh, grab my heat pad. Um, and hey, real quick though, uh, kind of transition here into Arios's workout life. Um. Arios, um, I recently weighed myself and have started to try and lose weight again. Um, and big ups to you, big guy. Um, Arios is like my workout buddy on my Peloton now. Um, yeah. Me and Arios are going to sit down every Sunday night and find what days work for best of us on the Peloton. And whether that's like a, a 45 minute club banger, and we're going after it or a 15 minute post ride stretch because we both can't feel it that day. I'm going to get on the bike and no pressure to you, Arios, but you're going to get me in shape for my wedding. Like oh, yeah, you man. are going to make me like shed this face fat that I have. Like you really are like helping me a ton, bro. Like I have been trying to get back on the wagon, dude. And you texted me randomly yesterday. Like, yo, do you want to like hop on the Peloton? I was literally just like <laughs> sitting here on my computer. Like, and I was like, yeah, I guess I'll put so like it, really big ups to you, man. Cause like after I did that, it was like dude, that was 30 minutes. Like it goes by quick. It sucks. Yeah. But then like I feel so much better. Like I feel like I don't know, like I achieved something. So big thanks to you, dude, that you yeah, are yeah. helping me on my workout journey. Oh uh, yeah, dude, of course. I mean, it definitely helps when you got friends to help keep you accountable as you, you know, kind of encourage each other and 
and you know do it together and because you're it's a dog tough. bro you're a dog on that peloton bro i have to hide my screen because like at one point i was like i'm gonna keep up with arios like i was like i'm gonna keep up <laughs> and then like we're like five minutes into the ride i think you're at like 30 points and i'm like at 15 and i'm like oh he's already pulling away <laughs> hey. we just started this boy's pulling away i'm locked in i'm locked in but dude, do, you, I do you follow like the exact when he's like 45 resistance maxed or are you always cranking that thing to like 50 um, 55 I mean, if, if he gives us a, like, I mostly take the numbers as a suggestion. Like if I'm doing the suggested like cadence or whatever, but I know that there's more in me, then I'll challenge myself and I'll, and I'll, and I'll push it up just because I know that I can do more. Um, and I'm trying to get the most out of that 30 minutes that I can, you know, I'm trying to push myself and, uh, and so I'll sometimes up the, you know, the resistance or up the cadence or whatever, just uh, just because I know that there's more in me for sure. So I kind of use it as a suggestion. So sometimes I go higher. Sometimes if I feel like I need a breather, I go a little bit lower. Uh, but, you know, I'm definitely know that if there's more in the tank, though, and I can really push, then then I'm going to try to, you know, uh, get it out of myself for sure. Yeah. Normally I can I only stay within the classes. I think there was one point where I was really on my Peloton shit and like really working hard. And then finally just kind of when I fell off the wagon, it was just like hard to get back on. I mean, my Peloton turned into a glorified coat rack. Like that's what yeah. I kept saying. Like that's all my Peloton is in my office. Like this thing literally sits here and mocks me. Like it sits here and just mocks me while and I'm judges on my you. <laughs> Yeah. Like this thing watching you piece of fucking shit. Like, that's probably what <laughs> it's thinking. Like while it's watching me, but I mean, just really thanks dude like i really needed hey. that and like it, it, it's hard for me to like reach out because like i never want to be like annoying or like uh like now i'm in charge of like working out with this guy or something like that um because i know you're a busy guy and you also like work out work out like you go to a gym and uh i mean do you go to a gym or do you work out in your garage though i just i just have a setup in the garage yeah so i got some weights barbell um but yeah um, bands adjustable dumbbells and then and then the bike as well so so um regardless of how i'm feeling with my stomach i am gonna after this like i said i said before the peloton but then i realized we were going super early this morning and i felt like shit this morning um let uh with the peloton after this ride I, i'm gonna go for it dude like let's get it but like i'm also not trying to burn myself out too i think i told you this yesterday I still have the fucking mentality that I'm a 15 year old and I, I'm wicked athlete and can fucking run a marathon. If like on, on a whim, because I'm a soccer player, Uh newsflash robber, you haven't got out of this fucking chair in three years. So, and then when I go to my Peloton, I like, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Like I was pushing myself to try and like get a good time and like a good workout in bro. Come minute two minute one left, like in the thing, bro, I'm gagging. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm hurting, but like, I kind of like that feeling. Cause then I feel like I, I achieved something like, yeah, I know I'm not supposed yourself. to normally work out to the point of gagging. Like that's not a healthy thing. Um, but I'm also not trying to super burn myself out by doing that. So like today's workout, I think will be a little easier, um, than our club bangers ride yesterday. If you're cool with that. Of course, man, of course. But you know, it's all about just building that endurance, being consistent over time. They'll get easier and easier. But, you know, credit to you for pushing hard. You know, I know you have a goal in sight and uh, every day just take, you know, a few steps towards that goal and and, and yep. we'll get it right for the wedding. Just got to lose, lose this face fat. Like that's the, the I, I, get, I gain it in my face. So I just want to, I don't know, just just be lean and confident again. And like when I was in the best shape of my life, bro, believe it or not, I was only going to the gym for consistent five months. Like I was literally following a, yeah. a, a an eating routine and a gym routine and it was five months and i was in the greatest shape of my life so yeah. i know it's literally like just fucking i hate using this term but just pulling yourself by the bootstraps and just fucking just doing it like yeah right so i'm gonna fucking really work hard on trying to trying to lose weight for my wedding dude and you'll be a big reason why i'm able to fit in a nice suit and a nice shirt and not feel like I'm um, a million pounds on my wedding day. So yeah, I man. appreciate you, dude. Yeah. We'll just push each other and, and, you know, we'll have fun with it for sure. And for those that don't know, Arios, uh, recently, um, I wouldn't say recently, you actually, I looked it up cause I wanted to feel like a piece of shit. 
I was like, I wonder how many workouts Eros has done since getting his Peloton. You are actually right around uh, the same amount of workouts I've done, uh, but I've had my Peloton for two years longer than you. So, like, um, <laughs> it made me feel like, all right, I need to get on this fucking wagon and I need to do it. Um, and I recently weighed myself. I weigh the highest I think I've ever weighed. I think I weigh 185. Um, and for, I think when I first started my weigh in in the podcast, I think I was like 181. So I'm literally four pounds heavier than when I started the podcast. And the whole point of me doing the podcast was me to lose weight, which I did for the first 30 episodes. Um, but then COVID hit and it totally took me out of the, totally took me out of it. Do you follow an eating routine or do you kind of do your own, like eat what you want? Um, I mean, if I'm, if I'm trying to lose weight, sometimes I'll keep a little food log, like with an app or something, just to kind of get a gauge of how many calories I'm taking in. But, um, I don't usually track too much like food intake. I'll, I'll just, you know, mostly concentrate on making sure I'm getting in, you know, some servings of vegetables, fruits, but also want to make sure I'm getting in enough protein, um, every day as well, especially since I do exercise a lot, I play a lot of tennis as well. So oh. you know, th there's a lot of, uh, pickleball, any pickleball? I played pickleball a little bit as well. Nice. Very fun. Okay. Highly recommend. Uh, highly recommend. I like. That. Yeah. So you know, I do uh, put a lot uh, of stress on my body. So just got to make sure I'm getting in proper hydration, enough protein, and you know, enough uh, um, macro and micronutrients just to you know keep my body going. How many days a week would you say you work out? Uh, work out. Um, like with weights, probably four times a week. And then, uh, usually do, do yoga, uh, a couple of other times a week. And then, you know, along with playing tennis, uh, two, three, four times a week, depending on the week. I so, uh, no, I don't, I don't work out every day, but, but I try to move my body yeah. every day. Just, uh, just well, to stay I active think and that's my good. problem is I don't move, you know, I don't just go like, well, like I will sometimes be in this chair for seven to eight hours. And then, yeah. you know, I walk and I'll, I'll have like sharp pains in my legs or like a sharp yeah. pain in my back. And it's literally, cause I know, Hey Robert, it's cause you're fucking lazy and didn't move yeah. all day, bro. And you're like, your body needs to move. Your body needs yeah. to have like things flowing through it. So well, that's not even just you, Rob, too. I mean, that's our whole culture. That's all of us. You know, we're looking at computers all day. And so we all kind of get hunched over and stuff. Um, but it's good for us to take breaks, especially during those long work hours at the computer. You know, every hour, get up, you know, maybe maybe stretch out a little bit, especially the hips. When we're sitting down a lot, those hips tend to shorten. We get very tight hips and hamstrings. So it's good, you know, every every hour, just get up, you know, do a little bit of stretching, kind of loosen up, walk around a little bit. And, uh, you know, but even some, some, you know, simple things is like when you, when you, like when you go to the store, maybe, maybe park, not as close as you can, but park as far as you can and then walk all the way there. And then you got to walk all the way back. Just, you know, little, little, little ways to, to get more movement in throughout the day, which, which adds up and, you know, helps our and bodies. The hardest part too is like, it's about to get cold and snowy here, which is like, mm -hmm. I can't just go out and like walk and stuff. So like, I'm really yeah. going to have to be disciplined and like, Bro, I don't feel good. I don't want to do it. And then it's like, okay, well, you don't need to do a fucking 45 minute club banger AT ride. Like yeah. you can do a 15 minute yoga sesh. Like, yeah, yeah, for cause sure. The, Cause I have the problem again, I work really hard and then I'm like, hell yeah, I feel good. I killed that workout. I still fucking got it. Like if, I, if, if you call me to go and do something, I can do a 45 minute club banger. Like I can do it. But then like the next day comes around, I'm literally like, the fucking alien from Mexico that they thought, thought they found. And I, I can't move. Like I can't, I can't move. Uh, so, um, hearing that you stretch and all that kind of stuff, man, yeah. I need like that. That's what I need to start like putting yep. into like my, like, like, even when like you get up and like stretch, like, or while I'm streaming or something, just something that's really quick. Um, how's your workout uh, routine going blue? I know you were kind of, uh, getting into routine and stuff with uh working out uh i still go uh some weeks i'll go like three weeks some weeks i'll go four or three. some days some some weeks i'll go like three days a week some days i'll go four it depends on the programming because nice. at my class they just kind of like depends on what's what's happening usually it's like the cardio days um that are like leave me pretty sore so like there's some days like i gotta make sure i'm i'm regenerated i don't want to go in like like hobbling into the gym because then I risk like you know actually getting like actual muscle damage and this last thing I want mm -hmm. so 
yeah. that'll know my body and be like, am I too sore to go work out today? And like, if I, sh- if I'm like going down the stairs, like considering going a leg at a time, I'm like, you know what? We're not going to the gym today. <laughs> so yeah, I'll still go. That's like, smart. I'll go. Like that is smart. Three, four days. I, I try to go four days a week. Uh, whenever I started doing five, I noticed I started getting like kind of like back pain. Um, yeah. I got a little no more one knows me- you better than your own body. I got a little more meat on me, mm-hmm. so I'm I'm naturally carrying more weight on me when I'm doing these exercises. So it's a little it's a little you know it's a little harder on my base frame. So, but um, at the gym I go to, we do. I mean, we don't really have like uh necessary. I mean, we do target like specific parts, but like the the whole design philosophy is like you know. You're doing cardio and you're doing uh some type of lifting, some type of weight, some type of some type of conditioning along with that cardio. So I'm pretty much always I'm just leaving I'm just I'm just letting Jesus take the wheel while I do this stuff. I will say I have glad you're doing it, man. I have uh developed quite a big enjoyment of lifting that I didn't think I would enjoy. So Nice dude. That's great. It was just like a good feeling. I mean, do you guys feel like when you do a good workout and when you're in a good groove, like it truly does help your mental health too. Oh. Like you're doing great things for yourself physically, but that also correlates into that mental boost as well, where you feel well, good about yourself. You know, that's that's what I've noticed the most is I started doing it because I wanted to be healthier. And what I've noticed is, yeah, like cool, like I'm getting healthier, but I've also um there's something like as a gamer all right i think every gamer can relate to this seeing progress and seeing uh like steady improvement is yep. extremely addicting so um we love that as you i do want to be healthier but like my success and my motivation isn't really that anymore it's more so like my goal is like i want to be stronger uh, I want to do this. I want to do that. Cause like you see other people do it and it makes you want to do it too. So yeah. Cold Turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or something even crazier than that. We're talking about our sponsor fume and they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, Why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning, flavored air device, and that's just that. Instead of vapor, fume is flavored air. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. And instead of hormone chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors. If you think about it this way, for me, fume is like a herbal tea, while my other sorts of pens are bad sodas. I'm just making the right decision every time I'm using my fume. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has had thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code GG to save 10% off when you could get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code GG to save an additional 10% off your order today. Almost like you're Um, leveling up in the gym, you know, like you get to that next weight, you reach the next level of strength, you know, you may be like a spec into strength with another point, you know, just this morning that literally happened where we did, um, uh, rope climbs, uh, when I started, I couldn't even do like zombie rope climbs where that's basically like from like you want like you pull, you're pulling yourself up the rope without um, like from, from your butt on the floor. Right. And yeah, yeah. today I did like for the first time, uh, like an actual rope climb with like the feet and the hands and everything. And I was like, dude, I just fucking do skill points invested, baby. Let's go. And it's nice. nice. It's very nice. Very prog. I'm in MMOs. You prog fights, and in IRL, you're prog in you're prog in fitness. So, yeah. And um, a little bit of a transition here. Um, Bungie just happened to prog ignorance. <gasps> Jeez, uh, what a update. transition, Uh-oh. man. Um, and some people may be curious about what we're talking about here. Um, but. Um, Bungie um, recently released a, 
Uh, I'll let you kind of explain. It was a uh, yeah, um, I got, I got you. Hispanic Heritage Month okay. type of beat. Uh, so Bungie like um talked about their whole um they've been doing like a lot of idea things, which is like um they talk about a lot of um ways of like um like inclusivity programs and how they can talk about things at Bungie and their employees and like cool shit that they're doing with uh groups that don't necessarily always get the spotlight that they deserve. And so they had um uh they finally uh after a really long time finally uh acknowledged Hispanic Heritage Month at Bungie which took a while but appreciate you guys but they um they the tweet was basically like um uh i have it right here if you would like me to leave you you uh, go for it. it you go for it you you hit me with um, it um being latina latina latino or latine um is more than just a location on a map just as being hispanic is more than a language we might speak we are proud to introduce our newest idea latin at bungie and with a link that was the the tweet yeah so the basic idea behind why people were upset is become is because as latinos we or latinas or latinas as you would you know so on and so forth um generally speaking the way spanish works is it's a highly gendered language and there's a lot of criticisms of that as we you know go into the future and you could definitely make a lot of criticisms that it's unfairly masculine to a degree right that being said the language is designed that's how the language is that's, designed. that's though, how like, the language is designed and the language can evolve feminine, on its own like yeah and so the x is uh solely in english insertion and that's why so many um that's why so many latin people don't identify with it and if you asked if you asked like some random on the street like yo what's up yo uh happy latinx uh heritage they're gonna be like what the fuck are you talking about because one it doesn't make sense and then two it's just such um it's such a niche i didn't term. even know how to read it it's such like, a niche I, like, term and I mean, full stop, the term is really culturally insensitive because it's not from the Spanish language. It's fully an English insert. Um, it's predominantly inserted by people who are from the United States. So, uh, uh, you know, Latin Americans from, you know, the upper half of the globe. Um, and so while there's nothing like inherently wrong with the concept of wanting to identify to English speakers, the issue is more so how it's been pushed on to Spanish speakers of like, this is the term Latinx, but, um, you know, there's already been other terms like Latina, which is a much more phonetically, grammatically, culturally yeah. respect, uh, driven term that allows gender neutral people to engage, uh, in that way. And, um, I mean, I made a whole tweet about it and I was like, bro, just call me a slur because, because I mean, it's, it's like, it's like, um, it's, it's, I'm going to, I'm going to, I think, my... I think you put it in a good term. You put it in a good way of phrasing it for me. You, you said it's basically like, if like Hispanic people told people like to roll your R's and yeah, you're speaking it's English, like, like it, like you're literally like, Hey, that R, in that R in your language, you got to roll that, bud. It's like, bro, I speak English. Don't give a shit, bro. Roll that motherfucking R bro. So it just doesn't yeah. really make sense. Um, and also like, I'm just going to be full stop right now. Um, go for it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go in Spanish. Buck, chief. Spanish is generally identified by, uh, the Northern hemisphere homies as a generally Brown language. You don't see people like pushing on like uh the German language or like uh um any other like uh Norwegian or uh, I don't know fucking Swedish Danish, Swedish Dutch. you don't they don't push that on they don't like say like hey this is how you should uh refer to people neutrally they don't do that because those are white predominantly white languages um and this is a recurring thing with any uh predominantly brown perceived language is people are kind of like hey like this plight is more important than the significance of your language culturally um 
And it's just like, hey, we could definitely do both. Doesn't have to be like, this is more important than that. Thus, that is not important anymore. So, um, I don't know. So it's, like, was it, the issue that like Bungie's post all of a sudden seemed like totally out of touch and like, okay, now, now you're saying this, but you're completely out of touch well, with what you're saying. It's out of touch because a lot of Latin people just like don't like the term because it just doesn't make sense. Nobody who speaks Spanish uses the X and it's like, um, I don't know. It's like some random white dude telling you like, like, Oh wow. You're a Latin X. Some people even say shit like Latinx and I will throw myself off a cliff. I'll throw myself off a cliff. Watch how fast I can kill myself, bro. And so it's like, Hey, you're this. And it's like, no, I'm not. And they're like, but you definitely are. It's like, homie, just call me a slur then man like just if you're gonna all if you're if you're already pushing this on me like this is what you are bro it's like okay man just just beat beat the shit out of me so beat the shit out of me so i can get get on with my day man like and i think the also worst part about this is you know it wouldn't have been a big deal if bungie immediately was like hey like we see our bad like we didn't understand we tried the like you guys are right we're we're wrong Instead, they just started hiding replies oh, that yeah. were like mm-hmm. basically saying like, well, we don't like that type of thing. I just thought it was a, a well, entirely like a just missed the ball. So so the reason why they're probably not going to address it and it's pretty tough. is You don't think they'll ever address this? Oh, no, no, they're not going to address it. The, the reason they won't is because the harsh reality is like um, is um, in Latin culture and Hispanic culture. Uh, there's a lot of like transphobia and like people don't really believe in the concept of like people being non-binary or like not really like identifying with ma- like identifying with male or female. And so there's a lot of people that definitely like use the the Latinx soapbox as like oh like this shit's not real versus oh, like, like this? yeah versus like the people who have a good intention of being like hey this is pretty culturally insensitive. There's already like, there's already neutral terminology you can use in the language that makes sense. Um, so the reason why it's not going to be addressed is because you have those people being like weirdly like transphobic and like homophobic and, and those people like tend to be like, um, they kind of muddy the crowd and the, and the overall message of, Hey, can you please respect the language that, represents so many like latin and hispanic people across the globe um so it's it's just it's tough because you have like especially from like a corporate situation because like I mean, the corporation is always skin deep in the way that they want to yeah. represent people so when you have like a community manager skimming through the replies and you have like you have like um i don't know john deere in the comments being like uh wake up liberal oh woke hive mind uh there's only two genders and then you have like someone else being like hey man like I, this just feels kind of culturally insensitive he's not going to be like huh this seems culturally insensitive the person's going to be like oh man john deere is being homophobic again so there's always something yeah exactly so <laughs> it gets hard it gets hard to see like who has good intentions and uh, who wants their language to be respected versus um, well, their language and their heritage to be respected versus um, yeah, some people just kind of like fucking it up for the rest of us. Well, well you know, and stuff. you know, Blue, I I have a lot of respect for you, dude, because you know, I I reached out to you in a text. Um, you know, my Hispanic roots is something that like I feel I have lost touch with, and it it really affects me, and it sucks because you know, my dad was born in Colombia. My whole family lived in Colombia, like before, like I'm a first generation Venegas born and raised in America. And what sucks is I have completely lost touch with like the Colombian side. And like, you know, recently my Fia and my Tago passed away, which is like the only kind of like connection I felt like I had with my Hispanic side. Let it out, Rob. And and now like my 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 dad's trying to sell the farm that we have in Colombia. And, you know, I just feel like I'm losing, I'm basically, I wouldn't say part of the problem, but like, I'm basically allowing myself to be like what my dad was and just be completely whitewashed and lose every sort of identification I have with like my Hispanic root. And it it sucks because my whole life, you know, 
I'm a white ass American, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I, I've never felt Hispanic, you know, and when I was raised, there was never Colombian art or Colombian heritage in my house. The only time I ever saw that is when I would go um, to California and hang out with my fee and my Tago and just be like, man, I can't like talk, to, you know, I, you know, what really sucks. And like one of the biggest regrets I have in my life is, you know, I never took Spanish seriously enough to like, thank my grandparents, you know, for the sacrifices that they made or like have just like a deep level conversation with my grandparents. It was always surface level because all I could do was speak English and like they knew I couldn't speak Spanish. So like I was I, I feel like I was like part of the problem and, you know, like losing a side of me that like I've never really felt like I even was in touch with. Uh, so like I reached out to Blue to kind of like figure out like how to like just get in touch with that side and stuff. So. I'm going to start Duolingo and I'm going to get very serious about it. Join I'm going to go and try and visit Colombia with my dad. You know, my dad always bitches about going to Colombia, always bitches about it. But like, I want to go with him and like, see like why he's bitching and see if I can like tell like, and show him the beauty of the part that he fucking hates or something. I don't know. Like I, I'm really going to just try and like, just kind of get back into that. And because like I've never it's always been like a weird kind of touchy subject for me because I feel like if I did identify myself as like Hispanic descent and stuff, it's like, no, nah, dude, you're white. Like, well, I mean, you and then are. I don't. You are. Well, yeah. Hispanic. Like, I, but like I, yeah, I like, don't want to like to be like, no, like, I'm actually Columbia. Like my real name's Robert. Like, I always felt like it was weird to like have to like justify myself or like put myself into that kind of spot. But like, you know, like my real name is Roberto. Like, you know, like your last name is Vegas, am, bro. Yeah, like you're, I, I you're just with us. I just feel like, you know, my whole life I've like lost touch of that side and it like kills me. Uh so I'm gonna try my best to try and, you know, you know, respectively get in touch with those roots again, you know. Um, and just try and figure out like you know, my family's history and shit. You know what I mean? Like I, it, it was, it's just like a, something I've always kind of struggled with. And recently with my like grandparents passing away, it was literally like, okay, like I have to like, cause my dad ain't going to do it. You know, my dad was like, Hey Robert, I moved to America in the 1960s. Like I, I'm American. Like that's how his idea of, of it just is. So yeah. um, I really appreciate you blue, like listening Dude, to me and talking to me about that. It was really cool. It's hard. Yeah. Cause it's hard because, like, um, Darius, you can relate to this heavy. It's easy to be in touch with your culture down here in yeah. San Antonio! What the two, San Antonio? The 210. Los Spurs! Tony Parker! <laughs> <Downtown City. laughs> Team Logan! Like, yeah, easy, easy. It doesn't get more mayo and vanilla than Colorado. It's, it's easy so. down here. It's easy down here, even when oh. you are. You know what, little waditos, Arios, You know, I could feel that we where, you know, little white boys. But like you, your parents are, your parents got that Latin heritage. They got that, they got that Spain in them. They got that that Mexico. They got that whatever. And you know, like it's it's easy here in San Antonio because like always, always representing Latin culture, always representing Hispanic culture, always like. Hey, celebrate that shit. So it's easy. Like it's super easy. Um, yep. Everyone down here has some level of Spanish, even if you've never taken a Spanish class, you got to order those breakfast tacos somehow, baby. And, <laughs> and it's just easy. Like it's easy for us to celebrate our culture down here because this city is all about celebrating the culture. Whereas like you're up North, you're in Colorado, hot, literally hot as white as it could be, baby. Like you, you don't have like opportunity to celebrate it. We have like eight yeah. different events down here. We have Dia de los Muertos. We have the Riverwalk is just the mecca of of Hispanic culture, Mexican culture. Uh, oh. Down here, it's little Mexico, dude. Like we got Market Square, um, eight million Mexican places constantly, all the time, and every single one of those Mexican places, is like, dude, celebrate that shit. We got Mateo over here. Arios, Arios, I'm, I know can relate to. Maybe he doesn't yeah. look traditionally like what you think, like Hispanic or Mexican person or a Latin person looks like. But like Mateo's, Mateo's in it, baby. He knows his, he knows his culture, his history. It's easy. That's it's right, easy man. for us. Easy for me. I'm a little little mestizo bastard, and it's just it's you, easy. 
um and and so like i was telling rob like just because you're white like like a third of colombia is white like so many so many um hispanic and latin countries are have a have like a significant white population that is you know and like maybe that's the ignorance in me that like i have to look hispanic to or something to like well, yeah. feel hispanic like and maybe that's like you still got it's that just, culture though. i just have to like get you still over got that, that and, heritage you know, like here's the thing yeah. here's the thing like it's all visually uh, it's all perspective right if shakira did not speak spanish that would be the most peak white woman you ever saw but because shakira is shakira baby you see here and you're like bro that is a hispanic Those don't lie. that is a hispanic don't. goddess that is a hispanic <laughs> goddess but if you saw Shakira just saying like, um, hey guys, um, so happy to be here. Uh, I'm going to perform my smash hit, Hips Don't Lie. You'd be like, did I say this on YouTube? I could definitely say it on YouTube. You'd be like, yes, fuck cracker. It. No, she's still a Hispanic goddess. You You're good, bro. She's You're still good. a Hispanic goddess, dude. So it's like a lot of people don't realize that Hispanic heritage is more than just the color of your skin. Dude. It's where you come from. It's the Rob... You got that white skin in you, baby. You colonized my people. Have pride in that, baby. Because you're Gosh. still a Spanish speaker, my guy. Doesn't matter. That's my mom. So she's from Oklahoma. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You still, you know, it's still part of the culture and, and it's still part of. And, like, that's my thing is, like, uh, like my Hispanic, it's, like, not, fa- like, my dad was born in the 60s and was, like, lived in, like, my whole family lived in Colombia up until the 1960s, uh, four, 60 years ago. And it's, like it took 60 years to completely like, I feel like my ancestors would hate me, you know, like that's what I, I really, sh- do you feel anything like that Arios or do you, or Mateo, right? Um, do you come from yeah. like a Hispanic background and stuff? I do. Yeah. My mother is, uh, is full Hispanic. Uh, my grandparents were from Mexico and, uh, yeah. So my, my, my birthright name is Matthew, but my family is what call, uh, call me Mateo, uh, which is the Spanish, uh, you know, version of Matthew. Uh, yeah so yeah i mean kind of like blue said you know living in san antonio it's nice to be surrounded by that heritage by that culture you know you, you know you uh you know you get together for you know thanksgiving and family outings and you know everyone's together it's not just and, turkey uh, it's tamales too baby like it's yeah easy. Uh, yes sir yeah you know absolutely yeah, i got you know, cranberry so. sauce at mine bro yeah, like, cranberries yeah. What the- <laughs> yeah, yeah you come on man like yeah, so it's good to be surrounded, you know, you know, uh, surrounded by the culture, but you know, keeping it in your heart and 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 knowing that that's 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 you inside and exactly. and always embracing that. Yeah, so it's hard to do embrace. some Duolingo and 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 really try and like get back in touch with us. So and, and I, I talked to my dad about it. I said next time he goes to Colombia, like I want to try and go and kind of just like learn about it. Uh, cause whenever he goes to Columbia, man, like all he does is bitch. So like, mm. I want to see if I can like, maybe like show him like, well, the, like the awesome parts and stuff, you, you, you know, like, yeah, it, as, you know, with parents, right? Like the, the whole concept is like how they struggle to get what they have now. Right. My dad, as Mexican as they come, like you, like he is just, just, ugh. You see that dude and you're like, dude, you probably racial racially profile that dude. Easy. Easy. You definitely racially profile that dude because that dude is Mexico and a man. But that dude shit talks his culture constantly. That dude's like, oh, Spanish, such an ugly ass language. But here he is half his. He speaks Spanish like half his half his day. He's a truck driver. He's going all around Tejas, baby. And it's like when you actually like talk to your fam and it's like, like they're still like they don't even, they don't realize how big their culture is a part of them. Cause they're just in it. Right. And yeah, even though my dad will absolutely shit talk every part of his heritage, like he's still in it. He still has pride in it. And yeah. he still wanted to pass it down to me. Um, whereas it's <laughs> my mom listens to this. I'm sorry, mom. I, I'm going to blast you a little bit. My mom is my mom is Spanish at heart. It's easy for Spain to talk about how much they love their culture because Spain is, you know, conquistadors. They're the colonizers. Barcelona. They're the peak colonizers. So they, of course, of course, Spain. As a Spanish person, you're like, I got that Spanish pride, baby. Yeah, you got that Spanish pride because you annihilated the bottom <laughs> half of the hemisphere real easy. <laughs> so you still got the Hispanic, you still got the Hispanic dog in you, but you know, it's, it's different, right? You have different perspectives yeah. on, on your culture and your heritage. So 
Um, but yeah, like, I mean, like, even if your dad bitches and moans about Columbia, like, there's still details and, and finer, you know, finer parts of his life that are where, you know, his culture and his heritage is so ingrained in him. He just didn't really pass it down to you because he was like, I don't want my, you know, I want to let my son, pa- you know, make his own path, blaze his own trail. Well, that's what he just said, like, when he moved into America in the night, he's like, I was American, like, you know, I exactly. learned English. I was like, so... And there's it, that pride, like, there's the, there's that dual pride, right? Like, yeah, you've got that heritage, but it's like, dude, I made it in America, like, I'm a, I'm an American. And it's true, he is. He's an American. Yeah. My dad, American. My mom, American. But, you know, they still have that culture behind it. It's just, hey, like, they made it I just it don't here, think they so. look at it, like, as a bright spot, like, our generation kind no, of. No, like 100%. Like, like, because. Like they look at yeah. it as, like. I mean, historically, right, over the past, especially over the past 10 years or so with the way, like, American politics has gone, there's a lot of shame in, uh, you know, being Hispanic or coming from Latin descent. And it's it's a little different, and even like you know, from the '90s to the 2000s, even before that in the '80s, it wasn't like it wasn't like culturally cool to be uh, from a brown heritage. So it's 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 a, it's a little sensitive, but like especially with our generation, you know, people are just like fuck it, like this is who I am. I'm gonna have pride in that. Uh, but it yeah. it, it, it could be a little tough. It could be a little tough, you know. I, I like uh, like me and Eris were saying it. We grew up in San Antonio. They were always unapologetic and celebrating it. So it's just, it's just, it just comes easy to us. But in yeah. wider America, it's harder. It's, it's not, it's not as easy to just like get in tune with that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And even like negative things from our parents, we can always be like ourselves, like, Hey, that stops with me just because they were that way. Doesn't mean that I'm going to be that way and then pass it down to whoever, you know, whatever comes after me. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah whether it be abuse or, you know, uh, you know, in terms of being prideful of your heritage, like, you know, You're I, Colombian I will, yeah. Yeah. And so that negativity stops with you and then going forward, you embrace it and your, you know, children or whoever comes after you embrace it as well, because it starts with you. Damn, Ariel. I, that was, I, I appreciate the talk boys. That was yeah. potent as fuck. Uh, Clip do we want to touch on anything before uh, Q and a, um, I did want to ask this. Eros, do you know what a himbo is? Himbo, no. I hate you. I hate both of you. Sounds like a bad word. I hate both of you. I hate both of you because you two are like the most thirsted after people in this in this team. And you two are just ignorant to it constantly. Himbo. I have people in my chat being like, dude, those two guys, and I'm like, I'm trying to play for an attractive un- un- unintelligent, unintelligent man. I'm trying oh, to play man. Pokemon. You guys need to stop telling me how attractive people are. I'm cool are. with that. that. Get it. Get it, Rob. Get that I'm confidence. Cool with that. No, but like uh, Arios is like a big like a uh, golden retriever of a human. He just doesn't understand. Neither does Rob. Just the absolute, I think I'm very okay. The insane very amount okay. of thirst I have to deal with and other of us have to deal with when like People are like talking about attractive. Now, I'll people. tell you what, if I stay on this workout routine, I will be get definitely it. be a him. Get it He's like, going to get it right. I, I will He's, get back into my going to go from an eight to a 10 real quick. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm back at my seven, two stage. I can get back to my eight, five, nine phase. I really can. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, back to my seven. I'm just curious. Cause when you guys are like, why don't these people understand it? I'm just like, trust me. They don't understand it. They just don't get it. Yeah. You got Himbo no, no over idea. here, the peak Himbo, and Himbo is like a very like endearing term. It's like, I mean, Arios, you can definitely agree that you are a big, goofy, muscular, uh, towering, gentle giant, and you're that's I mean, a Himbo. If you say so. I, I I really Look, appreciate see? that. See, I, I, just like that. They're so humble. It sucks. It's just the worst because you guys are just the humbleness just makes it even harder. Stop being so lovable, you two. You guys are freaks. God, just the I worst. Try not be lovable. Keep I mean, I doing just, it. I, Keep doing it. I honestly it, just but. don't have that self confidence in myself like that. Like, which is insane you know. to me. I can do when I'm like a himbo, but like right now, I know I look like a seven. And then Rob like, says and, shit like that, but Rob will like no go reason. from Rob will go from like, oh, man, I'm just the ugliest person of all time. But then he'll flip the switch and be like, oh, dude, it all. If I have a good hair day, bro, and I feel like damn, dude, this man is unstoppable. Day, I was watching uh, the David Beckham Netflix series, and like, if mm. I could only be half as sexy as that man is, That's like, sexy guy. Yep. 
Um, all right, let's start with the uh, let's, Q&A let's get these here. Questions. Uh, so Whittle had a question. He said, you guys seem to be, uh, everyone seems to be playing the new Cyberpunk DLC. Everyone seems to be really enjoying it. We kind of talked about that earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lumberlord says, for Rob, on a scale of 1 to 10, how mad were you at Arios during the Raft playthrough for you two and Mr. Fruit? Oh, man. oh boy! Yikes! I'd probably say like a seven and a half, eight. But like, what's what's good is that about that is that like that that makes good content. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Arios knows that, and yeah. so what? So Arios knows how to like kind of p- poke and prod me to like get mad and annoyed and stuff because he knows that like is fun and make will make for good content just for good exposition and just kind of. Um, so I I know he's not trying to purposely piss me off, but he's still pissing me off. So I'd say it was about a seven and a half, maybe eight, eight and a half when I got done. I, I always tell people this. It's one of the first times I ever got done like recording slash streaming or whatever I was doing that day and come upstairs and like sit on the couch and just look at Cindy and go, man, like work was tough today. Like, work, was, uh, <laughs> yeah, work, was work, work was, it was the only time I think I've ever called streaming or recording work. <laughs> like ever. I, I definitely overdid it at times. I mean, of course, like I think the best content happens organically. I think at times exactly. I pressed a little bit and, and I overdid it, overstepped my bounds with the trolling and all that stuff, but it was still a fun time. Yeah. But it's looking back though, I'm like, yeah, that was, I probably <laughs> overdid it. That was a little bit excessive, but I think we had fun and it seemed like it made for some good memes throughout the years, you know. I'll still never forget the the it was um PUBG zombies. PUBG zombies, PUBG zombies. I've never heard yeah. I've never heard fruit. Yeah. Like that was genuine. That was funny. Like that, that, was, that was genuine genuine rage. That was primal anger. I, I have never heard him angry like that, and I don't think I ever will again in my life. Yep. And it was Everybody all because exploded. Arios committed when Arios commits to a bit, like it's full send. He's not stopping. And I respect well, hey, that so much about him. Fun fact though on that PUBG zombies, and sorry to kind of get off the rails no, here. But no, fun you fact about, about the PUBG zombies is we were we were like recording that content for a couple of hours, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, waiting to get till that final circle or whatever. I had gone off like in a car getting some supplies or whatever. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was a little checked out. We hadn't done anything for a while. <laughs> You know, the ADHD kicked in. I was I was kind of just sort of like checking out mentally. And so I'm driving this car full speed. Right. And honestly, like I'm probably looking at the other monitor or something and I'm just driving full speed just to feel something, you know, and then we just bam, we run in right to a car where all you guys are standing and everything explodes and all the content was lost and and the final circle lost. was ruined. Like it was, but it that's was, the thing. Like, yeah, it was. You know what I mean? Like if everything went normal, we'd never, we'd still not be talking. Bruce about, said know? it was right. lost, but, <laughs> but it was crazy because yeah, like, we'd been we'd been recording. We had gotten good rounds. The issue was like fruit, like wouldn't stop dying. Yeah, and he wanted to like. You know, to make like a good video, he wanted to have his yeah. perspective yeah. winning in the final round. Always but, keep fruit alive. Yeah, but he would yeah. always he would always just get like clipped. He would always be like one of the first to get knocked out. And so and so Arios, man. Uh, oh, just We finally had a good round. He stayed alive and then we all die. Well, it's funny because like there was I'm sure there was a round where like we had won with Arios in like the final circle and like Ario like we got a dub. We've gotten several dubs just without fruit. And so at this point, Arios is probably yeah. like, I don't see what the problem is, y'all. Like, we got a couple of dubs. Like, what's the, <laughs> what's the problem? <laughs> yeah, oh, we we got to get the right perspective. Man. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was um, crazy. That wasn't intentional, though. I just want to make that yeah. clear. Uh, Sometimes it is. But that says, um, I've been trying to bulk and have a game notes weight by going to the gym. Do you guys have any tips about how going about it? Uh, I think for bulking, it's all about protein powder uh, i could be wrong um low sets high weight and then a lot of it is what you're eating as well and a lot of protein, protein. like if you're trying to bulk like low low reps high weight um and a lot of and uh, most of it believe it or not is what you're intaking like food protein all that kind of stuff sure like because sure if you're, you're trying to oh go ahead make sure you're eating that protein right after your workout too big yeah. guy because that or or right before i think i don't know like the exact sign most yeah, most of mine most of my recommendation is like right after your workout, get some of that protein in. The science behind it is you, when you're ripping your muscles, essentially, you're building scar tissue 
like that like builds like your muscle or whatever if you're not taking in the protein necessary for them to build those like muscles like your body's just going to eat away at the muscle itself and like your fat as well so um and the other thing and like bulking too like fat isn't always a necessarily a bad thing as well um that can also kind of help you in bulking uh, but areas would probably have the best kind of advice. Oh, I mean, really, yeah, just stay consistent in in training uh, for sure. Just just find a routine and stick to that routine. Um, if you go to like if you go to a gym, go into the gym with an idea of what you're going to do, so that you're not just kind of walking around wondering, okay, let me do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Like go in with the plan and execute that plan. But I mean, like like you guys were saying, it it I mean. Um, you know, a lot of it is the nutrition side. And when it comes to bulking, you have to be in a caloric surplus, which means you have to be eating a lot of calories, but you don't want to dirty bulk, meaning that you just eat whatever you want as much as, you know, yeah. as you want, like you want to, you want to be eating a lot, but you want to be eating good quality foods too. But, you know, definitely getting in enough protein and eating as much whole foods as you can and not as, you know, a bunch of processed stuff. I mean, you can still build muscle eating bad food, but that's not great for your health. It's, it's not going to, you know, it's just going to make losing that weight harder down the line because um, you're going to yeah. be adding on more weight, eating, eating, you know, foods higher in fat and carbs and, and everything like that, but just eat food, train hard and stay consistent and, and you'll, and you'll make progress for sure. Um, we have one here says have y'all uh from gradient says have y'all thought about doing gg over easy merch would love to rock a content hoodie as a collab also loved the raft content with areas uh we've talked about it i just don't know what it would look like and um all that stuff um i always thought it would be cool um so at one point at some point having like a blues squishmallow a mr free squishmallow and then a rob squishmallow and then <laughs> And then having like a GG over easy plushie set that you could buy and you could place your plushies into this like little figurine, if you will. And then your little plushies would be having a podcast. But that is like a stupid idea. And but that's really the only I don't thing think I've it's dumb, but it is it is hard to to pull off. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Um Chaz says, Arios, what are your goals for the realm this season? Loving your content as always. And for Rob, how goes the wedding planning? Man. For super mega baseball for, I mean, for the realm where we're in season three, season one, we lost in the uh, second round in seven games, wow. early, early bounce season two. We got no, actually season one, we got bounced first round season two. We okay. lost in the second, second round or something like that. So first two seasons have been disappointing season three. It's championship or bust. We got to get over the hump, but it starts, yeah. you know, starts with me. Um, Wedding planning is going great. Um, we're in the steps right now of looking for a DJ at the moment. Um, there's this funny troll DJ. Her name's DJ Mandy on TikTok. If you guys ever look her up, um, she just makes these awful remake remixes, and I want her to perform at our wedding so bad. Um, so shout out to DJ Mandy. I'm gonna hit her up. Uh, Keeper says, "I know Arios is a physical specimen, and Rob ha- was was a baller at soccer. Appreciate the was." Uh, has the idea ever been brought up of having a one-on-one game of basketball or Pana for Rob? Well, wait, I, feel like I, could, like, I would. Wait, 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 extra well, summit? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, like, uh, I think it's me versus Arios. I think is what they're trying to. It, um, it would be cool. Like a fruit summit. Like we have like some three on three, four on four soccer, or like, you know, that would be, be kind of fun. Yeah. Some like, sick. you know, pickleball, whatever. Dude, let's just know in the soccer it. game, I'm passing it to my teammates every time. The less I have the ball, the better. Dude, like, let's do I it. Think it's, let's, I think that'd be really fun. Let's, let's, well, I don't see why not. Let's do it. It'd be fun. Yeah. We got some athletic people in, in the dream team. Yeah. Yeah. We could do like shirts for uh, skin and like Arios like and Fruit. Sort of like, Arios and Fruit are always on the skins, but like, you know, that'd be cool. Like uh, some sort of Crystal. Obstacle course. Or something. <laughs> Uh, says I've asked this before uh, to the guys, but I'm curious about Arios's answer. What does your gym routine look like for the week? Um, how do you? I'm actually very each curious time? about this. Uh, for me, I typically do two upper days, two lower days. So I'll typically do um, a lower upper, lower upper for four days. I kind of work that around days that um, I'm going to be playing tennis. So I typically don't weight lift on days I play tennis. I usually play like three, four times a week. 
Um, so one day may overlap, but, uh, you belong to a tennis club or is it just the local, like, no, I, I just go to the local courts. I got, uh, some friends that I've met just at the courts and stuff. And we, That's we try it. to get together and play. I used to play in a few leagues and stuff like that, like a doubles league, um, and a couple singles leagues, but I usually just like to go out there and hit around, um, which is always fun. And then, uh, Usually I'll do just for mobility and longevity uh, and general mindfulness. I'll usually do yoga like on any days, uh, like on any off days. So I'll, I kind of take my off days like an active off day. So, uh, you know, I might not like lift weights and stuff, but I'll do some yoga and, you know, just focus on breathing, focus on stretching and mobility just to stay, uh, you know, limber and, uh, and mobile as I continue to get older. So. Would you say that's one of the most underrated aspects of your like working out is like the stretching and the mobility yeah. part of it? hundred percent. Whether like when I used to go to gyms, uh, I just see a lot of people show up and then just immediately start to like throw on their max oh, and start man. You know, lifting. That just, it drives me insane because eventually those people are going to get hurt and then you get hurt. Then you can't do anything for a while and then you fall off the wagon and then you got to start all the way back over again. You got to, you, you know, you got to pr uh, prime your body for moving, lifting, and so definitely like the stretching, the warming up is it's it is it is oh way God. too often like overlooked and underappreciated. And not only before workouts, but after workouts too. Like you're yep. working out yep. and you're pumping your muscles and your muscles are shortening, like you got to get them back to their normal length. So we got to do, you know, pre-workout warm up and then post-workout cool down whether it be kind of a very light, you know, walk on a treadmill or light biking, followed by some stretching, like you got to prepare your body to work out, but then you got to recover from the workout. So pre and post. Um, last question here from Sleepy Fist is actually a great segue into something I'm about to do. Um, what Pokemon would you choose to help you in a survive a zombie apocalypse? Well, Wow. I'm going to choose mine from whatever oh, I get from this hey. uh, set. Um, Let's go. Blue, I don't know if you want any of these, but... Uh, I will take every the, single one of those. This came in the thing. I will keep the Mew Sunset one, but the other two I don't really care about. Oh, dude, um, give. Okay. So, now, is this going to be the first card that you pull, or is it going to be like... Whatever the 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 secret rare would be, or okay, or whatever okay, the, the hollow is. Yeah, okay, so these are the, the cards. Hollow. Yeah, I don't know what exactly we're looking for here, but we're looking for something. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab this one randomly here. Um, do you know blue in this set? If it's um, like what like is it to chase. the back or? Uh, they ch it changed recently. I think it's like three from the back, some shit like that. They changed it from like from Scarlet Violet onward, so I might have forgotten. I think okay, it's three so, from the back. It used to be four. Okay, so um, here's this for anybody that wants it. There's a green code thing. Rob has been watching some openings for it to be um, able to know that. I respect that, man. So, so what do I do? Do I go three, three, you and put then the forward? Three, you put you put the three from the back to the front. I think. Okay. Oh, and then Arios, it should be. Go? Oh, he's back. It's. It I'm should back. be the card, right? I think the or, yeah. Uh, then you then you just like from the front, just like go through them. It should be okay. Okay, we have uh, a Marowak. I don't oh know fuck! If you to... Is that hollow? Uh, yeah, that's hollow shit. Oh, did we mess it up then? Well, you got the Marowak. I think we did mess it up. Oh okay. Um. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'll put that in the back. Okay, so we got basic energy. Pretend you didn't see the Marowak. Let's go. Basic energy. Uh, far fetched. Uh, Shelder. So wh whoever I guess is the Pokemon, the coolest card is who I'm taking. Uh, uh, Fossil. Uh, Slowpoke. Uh, Hitmochan, one of Mr. Fruit's hated Pokemon. Oh, Dugong. I love Dugong. Dugong the homie. Sea King. Sea King. The goat. Bioplume. Oh, oh wait, huge. huge. Let's go, incredible. Rob. It's Dragonair. It? Could you not ask for a better one than that for a zombie I guess apocalypse? Get, I guess we get Dragonair. Wait, for the that's zombie actually, apocalypse. that is a beautiful card, too. Damn. Okay, Rob. All I right. Love pull. I love that for you. I would say that's a pretty good pull. I mean, it's not like most card, the only card that's like worth like, 
money money is the Charizard alt art. Well, that's a that's a pretty wicked first pull, man. Like, all right, yeah, yeah and then I think a... I'm guessing the uh, the Marowak, yeah, the Marowak yeah. is uh, behind it. So, uh, all right, I'm taking Dragonair uh, to sur- help me survive the zombie apocalypse. Just fly over the zombies, We're chilling. Well, Dragonair is a noodle, so unfortunately, oh, you can't fly. Yeah, you would think his that, ears fly, right? You would think Dragonair would be, you know, fly, but it, no, it's just a big pool noodle. Oh, never mind. <laughs> what is your what is your Pokemon knowledge, Arios? Like, um, what, it's I, not very extensive. I know like like the big you know the big ones, Charizard, Blastoise, Mewtwo. Uh, is this where I put my cards? Blue in this thing. That's like a deck box. Yeah, you could you could put your big poles in there if you want. Okay. Do you have any? Do you have any like sleeves or anything, Rob? No. I would I would do they I probably have, have sleeves, sleeves in there, right? Uh do they? Uh, I don't in that know. box? Maybe maybe something. Uh it has this. Um a clay mat. Well that's not a sleeve. Is there like um, one like most powerful Pokemon? Yeah, Arceus, the the yeah, he's like god, god of Pokemon. He's god sheesh. <laughs> he's just kinda cute. Arceus? That's cool. That was I good. Like that. Yeah, he's like Jesus. For, yeah, or Pokemon, Pokemon Jesus. Pokemon Jesus. Yeah, if kinda. we're talking about can, like, if we're talking about like statistically, like in game, the strongest, it's it's Mega Mega Rayquaza, Mega Rayquaza, Mega Rayquaza the the beast. Mm. Uh, okay, so who are you guys taking in the zombie apocalypse? Sorry for taking. That. I thought it'd be just kind of fun to open one, and we got a decent pull. I don't want to be. Che- I don't want to. I don't want to cheat and be like lol Arceus because then he could just like that's yeah like having God. Is uh is definitely gonna have its own, its own uh benefits. The apocalypse. He's <sighs> just a just a beater. That'll just. I need a morbid Pokemon. I don't know. Fuck, that's a hard question. Uh, dude, this is hard. I don't know. Go so, up. Uh, I'm gonna say. Fuck, man. Yeah, I don't know. Fuck. Rob muted for no. anyone. My fault. I hit the top. Uh, <laughs> uh, there you go, Rob. So there you go. Uh, here, Blue, I'll decide for you. Yeah, decide One, for me. Two, That's tough. There's so three, many four. valuable ass Pokemon. Is it five? No. Is it three to the front? No. It's, I just, I'm trying to get to the energy. Uh, I didn't if, think Snorlax would do in a zombie apocalypse. Probably just sleep through it. Probably sleep through it. I mean, he wouldn't even yeah. know he got eaten. Right. Blissful way to go. I'll probably go with him. I think uh, we're still, we'll just vibe and. Just okay, I think it's them. like only one. Okay, blue. Whoever is the last one in this will be yours. Okay, okay we're right. gonna go through this fast. Boom. Sorry, Jigglypuff. Oh, there's like a shiny something I don't see back anything. there. I don't see anything. There no problem. Uh, Armander. Come on, focus. Yes. There, there we, we go. go. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Sparrow. Okay, yeah, okay. Pidgey on my Ooh. goat. Knight. Tauros. Tauros. Oh, Tauros. Got Rhyhorn. Oh, okay, little Whoa. cool Rhyhorn. And then there's something back here. We just don't know what it is. This is who Blue would oh, take. Shit. Yo. Side oh. I don't I don't take side I take what's behind that. Uh I think that that's it. That nope, oh, there nope, is some. there's oh, one oh, more, the, bud. Oh, there is one more. Dude, Rob's actually pulling nutty packs. I'll take oh! that. I will take that. Whatever this Gengar is. Gengar? Oh, dude, Gengar is a murderer. I'll take that. I don't... I'll have to give it... I'll have to give this to Datto. I would yeet... While he's down here. Like, Psyduck's only about as valuable as, like, yeeting it into, like, a zombie horde. I don't think it's gonna... Bro, this Psyduck card is actually really cool. He's, like, walking down some stairs. Yeah. 
They, hey, they went. They put their whole Pokemon Ussy into this into the set. So yeah, they did a they did a nice job with that. Oh, yeah. What does Gengar like do? That would make him effective in the in the zombie. Uh, in general, he's just kind of a soul stealer. Um, you know, he does some. But zombies don't have souls. He's kind of a, say. but he's also a ghost type Pokemon, so he's he's instantly invulnerable to all zombie type things. Wow. But, oh. but he's also, I mean, Gengar can like, you know, with his eyes, he could stun people. He could just yeet out like little mini nuclear bombs with Shadow Ball. You know, he can. Gengar also has an insane move pool. He can use shit like Thunderbolt and Ice Beam. I think he could use Flamethrower. Gengar is pretty broken in in a zombie apocalypse. Damn. Um, like that. All right. Uh, Arios will decide who yours is with a pack. Okay. How about that. Here we go. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, I shoot anything. Rob's going to get another banger pack. Okay. Um, here's uh, this for the people that care. Uh, all right, all right. Um, are, are they still releasing new Pokemon every year? Uh, is every like two, three years or so. Um, mm. as uh, as new generations come out, they'll release new ones, and then like they have like a little remix thing going on where like they'll they'll remix old Pokemon, but like in a different region. So, mm. so there's hey Pokemon's Pokemon's eating right now. Make so much yeah, money. and this is like the one, original 151. So for boomers like us, Arios, that don't really follow Pokemon anymore. Ooh, I like this Squirtle card. Perfect. Ooh, is that it? Arena? Nope. Oh, oh what a card, dude! You get a Blastoise dude, EX. What to a help pick! You in the zombie apocalypse. Let's cook, Arios. Blastoise. Is there not one more? Uh, no, that's it. That's, that's it, dude. Nice looking card. Blastoise. Yeah. Hey. Blastoise is, a, I would say Blastoise is a good pig for the zombie apocalypse. You just flood him out. Yeah. That's a nice card. Yeah, zombies, I don't know if they can swim or not, so that's, that's probably good. I don't stand Swimming a pool's on command. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys, uh, that'll do it for the GG Over Easy podcast, episode 201. Big shout out to our boy Arios for Arios, joining us today. Thank you so Bad much GGs. for joining us. As always, awesome having you we still hey. need to go eat chipotle together which we, we do. have not done yet we do <sighs> God, we're, but yeah we're gonna thanks for having me on guys Arios. always always a blast thank you so much Love yeah. you guys. Uh, make sure you guys check out his cyberpunk streams at twitch.tv slash sir arios i believe uh, just, just, arios. Arios. Yeah, just, oh, just, just arios yeah just arios that's right definitely check out Arios' stream he has insane vibes over there that dude i is, appreciate you nobody yeah, on nobody on twitch is having more fun than arios dude so hey I'll love, man. Thank you. All right. We'll see you guys next week. See you guys next Later. time.